That was a goal number one. Saw it before more than scrolling drop. That was in today. It's October 25th, 2021. And today, we're going to focus on the major nor'easter that could bring a widespread amount of flash flooding through the northeast, as well as very strong winds where we could see wind gusts up to 60 and 70 miles per hour in some locations in the northeast. And we'll also briefly discuss about our next potential severe weather threat that is going to happen later during the week in the Midwest, as well as the small chance of a severe weather threat in the north peace for later tonight and into early tomorrow but before i begin make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content so let's begin by taking a look at the current water vapor imagery for um for the entire united states at this point the lower 48 and we do still see that pretty big bomb cycle now moving ashore into the western half of the united states headed further eastward and it is now weakening which is certainly good news so there isn't much of a threat that this poses as of now um for the western half of the united states but that could change as this heads towards the midwest where we could see a little bit more instability for thunderstorms to occur however the main focus in this video will be this next major nor'easter which currently isn't really considered or classified as a nor'easter just yet because the lower level center is still well um right around the great lakes region at this point and we have this other smaller upper level low now moving up the east coast and we're beginning to see a little bit more convection on the eastern side of this storm which is is representing that this low pressure system is definitely strengthening and soon the eventually the lift will be so high in this area to the point where we're gonna see a new low pressure system form and this small upper level low that's currently located right around the midwest at this um, time will then jump to where this new low pressure system will form and we're going to see rapid intensification after that and then as this moves northward it could linger which could pose more of a threat for a lot of the northeast but right now there it, this storm isn't really strong we do have this lower um low pressure system but there's a lot of cold air behind it so that is inducing a lot of lift in the atmosphere right here and that should create our next big nor'easter for the northeast now take a look at the current radar you see that we're seeing rain associated with this um surface low that's moving further eastward i meant to say surface low before i said upper low low i apologize but we're now seeing that surface low move further eastward and like i said we're eventually going to see a lot more convection later tonight throughout the um, east coast once this cold air that's behind this surface low moves closer to this low pressure system just off the north carolina coast and as it does so we're going to see more instability and as a result more rain showers and more thunderstorm activity occur later tonight throughout the northeast and more specifically the mid-atlantic states where a lot of the new york city metropolitan area of philadelphia could receive one to two inches of rain um just for tonight alone with potentially another two to four inches of rain on top of the one to two inches you're expected to experience tonight so a lot of rain is forecast um, we do have some thunder shower activity occurring throughout west virginia and the western portion of the state of virginia but we aren't seeing a large area where there's heavy rain just yet but that like i said that's quickly about to change once we do see a little bit more instability in the atmosphere for the east coast now taking a look at um the forecasted radar from the gfs model and despite the fact that we're literally only around 24 hours or less than that from the event there's still uncertainty regarding the exact track of this low pressure system between the two main computer models the gfs and the european model and as they're still taking quite stark contrasts um on quite um different tracks for something that's um only 24 hours out which isn't something you really see every day and that certainly unfortunately does add to the uncertainty of this storm because we don't know how close the low pressure system will be to the northeast um just yet um we or at least we don't have at least a general idea of how close it will be to the northeast which is definitely unfortunate because right around this time only 24 hours out from an event you'd expect to see a more definitive forecast for 
um, your location or what's um, or for a future storm in your area when it's only 24 hours out. But in this case, it seems like the GFS model and the European model are both having some pretty big disagreements. But um, I will still say that you guys are guaranteed to experience nor'easter like impacts throughout the northeast. So don't expect any drastic like changes of forecast or the weather conditions you should expect because you're of course still going to see the heavy rainfall that's inevitable at this point flash flooding is likely and you're likely to see still strong winds out of this whether the gfs model is correct or the european model is correct um if we were to take a look at the gfs models case you see that um, like I said, once this chop moves further eastward, it's going to bring the cold air and the unstable environment with it. And that's going to create a more unstable environment for this low pressure system to rapidly intensify. And eventually the lift is going to be so high in this area where we're going to see a new lower level center form right around the mid-Atlantic states, pretty much hugging the Delmarva Peninsula at this point. And we'd still see that other low pressure system staying a little bit further offshore, but um, overall, it's still a very powerful storm. As you could see, if we were to move forward on um, into Monday, um, right around very early on Monday, you see that the rain extends very far westward into upstate New York. We're seeing New York City metropolitan area get impacted by just very heavy rain based off of what the GFS model is forecasting. As the rain should begin tonight throughout new um the mid-atlantic states for the most part washington dc philadelphia the new york city metropolitan area the heavy rain should begin tonight for a lot of you guys and become really heavy right around the dawn of tuesday morning where we're, where we could see just heavy thunderstorm activity as this is very concerning when we're seeing red and oranges in um this large over one area because it could definitely raise a concern of flash flooding throughout the um, throughout the tri-state area of New York and that's certainly the last thing you want especially since how many floods you guys experienced in the northeast this year but um, you see that the rain will continue to stay over the same area in the New York City metropolitan area we begin to see the rain extend further northward into upstate New York and New England as well and all the while we do see the soil pressure some strengthen quite a bit because you see that it begins right around 999 millibar storm but um, the millibar pressure drops down to 976 Tuesday night and it's just off the coast of Nantucket at this point and Massachusetts and then it does a little bit of a left hook closer to the east coast and this is a pretty big concern because if it does because if the European models case were correct the left hook would be closer to the coast which will mean that many more areas would experience damaging winds and heavy rainfall in a longer duration event um, but um, the GFS model is still taking the more offshore um, offshore track, which is certainly good news, but it still you still will experience strong winds, especially towards New England, as well as heavy rain throughout the mid-Atlantic states. So you still should expect um, nor'easter-like impacts, whether the GFS model is correct or the European model is correct. The main concern I'm having with this forecast is which one will be correct, because if the European model's case is correct, it'll be a lot more um, concerning and it'll bring um, more significant impacts overall where we could see wind gusts maybe closer to 50 miles per hour in New York City rather than maybe 30 to 40 um, if the GFS model were correct. So now let's take a look at the wind forecast when it comes to the GF. Actually, let me show you guys the European next to show you guys what I'm talking about when it comes to the track the european model wants to take so let's take a look at the precipitation map and the surface map to really show where the low pressure will be located you see that the european model while initially it does like it does mainly stay off the coast it comes uncomfortably close to um new york city and new england right around the tuesday time frame where it's much closer than 
what the GFS model is forecasting. And that would mean that you would experience a more longer duration event throughout New England and the Northeast, as well as a stronger um, wind threat where the winds will be stronger, power out outages would be more likely. So this is something you certainly need to keep in mind throughout the Northeast for this week because you, um, for the next 24 to 48 hours, because you could um, see much more significant impacts if the European model was case for correct. So what will determine the track you might be asking? Well, it really all depends on this blocking ridge of north of it because if it's a little bit stronger and we see this ridge move a little bit further um, eastward, then we then there's more likely of a shot that the ridge will be at a location where it's able to steer the storm further east i mean westward and that would create more significant impacts from the northeast however if this ridge is a little bit weaker and is a little bit later um when it comes to moving eastward then we're less likely to see a hook that's as defined to bring more impacts in the northeast so we just gotta wait and see but i'd still expect just very um, sh um heavy rain and sh a lot of impacts throughout the northeast so um you uh, so whether the european model is correct or the gfs you still need to keep in mind of the that this will still be a significant event for a lot of the northeast so if we were to take a look now at the rainfall forecast this is concerning based off of what the european model is saying because if the european model's case were correct we could see an area of five to eight inches of rain throughout northern new jersey and throughout new jersey in general and new york city metropolitan area which would certainly be a uh, pretty big concern but even outside of new jersey you see that um pennsylvania and upstate new york as well as a lot of new england is still experiencing right around two to four inches of rain overall which is still a significant rain event and and if that rain drops at a very fast pace we could be talking about uh, major flash flooding in these areas so you need to pay close attention to that and we could see major river flooding um crests days after this event so um this so even if it doesn't flood while it's raining don't underestimate the rivers because they typically do some rivers typically crest um days after the rain event actually occurs so you need to pay close attention to the rivers all throughout your areas in the northeast because um flooding is certainly possible and i'd say likely at this point especially closer to new jersey and new york city and philadelphia where the rain should be the heaviest right around this area where a uh, good um three to five inches and in some cases five to eight inches is expected from the european model if we were to take a look at what the gfs model is forecasting when it comes to rainfall um the gfs model is still taking is still bringing quite a bit of rain if we were to take a look at the gfs model it's still bringing a good area of three to five inches um throughout northern new jersey and new york city metropolitan area and a good area still of two to four inches extending to pennsylvania and upstate new york as well so overall this will inevitably be a heavy rain threat flooding is likely i'd say especially in the more prone areas so keep that in mind throughout the northeast now in terms of the wind forecast because that's another big determinant in what type of impacts you should experience take a look at the um take a look at the wind forecast when it comes to um let me go back to tropical tidbits because it gives a better wind for or it, it gives a wind forecast so um bear with me here um okay let me just exit out so to give you guys um okay so here is the gfs model you see that the um um if we were to look at the wind forecast from the gfs model over the next um over the next 24 to 48 hours you're gonna see that the winds could occasionally gust at times close to 70 miles per hour you see the low pressure system comes very close to the coast of massachusetts and we do see the greens which represents um sustained winds right around 24 to 28 knots which is equivalent to like 30 to 40 miles per hour and i'd say in cape cod you could receive wind gusts well over 60 to 70 miles per hour so this is something you certainly need to keep in mind and even further eastward we do see those winds um, get quite strong throughout the east coast like saying in north carolina virginia uh, pennsylvania as well as new jersey and a lot of new england the winds do get quite strong and you see just off the coast 
Um, the winds are very strong, so maybe um, so maybe coastal flooding could be a concern in a lot of these areas. So make sure to keep that in mind. Now, um, taking a look at um, the um, and taking a look at the sea surface temperature anomaly. I want to show you guys this because this is concerning when we see sea surface temperature is a little bit warmer than average just off the northeast coast because it essentially will fuel this nor'easter a little bit more than if the sea surface temperatures were right around average or below average because when the sea surface temperatures are warmer than average that means the air temperature will be warmer than average and since the air temperature is warmer than average that means the air molecules will move a lot faster than average and because the air molecules will move a lot faster than average it will hold a lot more water vapor than average and that should create a more potent nor'easter overall because with water vapor comes a lot um it comes in with a lot of latent heat and that latent heat will fuel this storm in the upper levels of the atmosphere and also it'll help fuel the instability because again like i said the cold air that's behind this um, trough that's moving through the Midwest at this time will interact with the warmer than average air and that should create a more unstable environment overall and more convection throughout Northeast overall for a bigger Northeaster and a more impactful Northeaster to occur. So the warmer than average sea surface temperature certainly won't help and will strengthen the storm a little bit more than it, um, than it would have if it were around if it were over sea surface temperatures around average or below average. Now, taking a look at the future cast radar, I'll show you guys when to expect the rain. So, you should begin to see rain throughout the mid Atlantic states, such as North Carolina, Virginia, the Warm Peninsula, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, as well as the southern coast of New England, right around the very early morning hours of Tuesday into late, very late Monday night. And then you see by um, Tuesday at dawn, the heavy rain is right at New York City's doorstep or right over New York City. And we're seeing that rain extend to upstate New York as well. 7 a.m. on Tuesday, 10 a.m. on Tuesday, the rain extends further into Long Island. And we see rain continue throughout Pennsylvania and New Jersey and New York City as well. And then now you see that low pressure zone begins to strengthen just off the new england coast and now we're seeing heavy rain throughout new england headed as early as wednesday so this will be a long duration event as this solar pressure system is going to move very slowly over the next several days um take a look at the forecast of rainfall you see a large area of three to five inches throughout new jersey long island um new york um the southern portion of new york and we're seeing one to two to two to three just north of that which includes boston and the southern coast of massachusetts i mean not massachusetts new england so that's a, definitely something we need to keep in mind and in terms of my rainfall forecast is basically pretty much um synthesizing the data from the gfs model and the european model to make a reliable forecast when it comes to rainfall i'm expecting three to five inches throughout the throughout on new jersey pennsylvania new york and southern new england but i wouldn't be surprised if there's localized amounts of five to eight inches in one of these areas where it could maybe receive a little bit more rainfall so you guys certainly need to pay close attention to this i'd say flooding is likely flash flood watches are issued and in terms of where the strongest wind gusts will be i'd say right around nantucket and cape cod the wind gusts should be um in excess of 70 miles per hour around boston i'd say we should see wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour new york city maybe wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour and this includes new jersey as well so this should definitely be a pretty big wing event, but the main event will be rain um, for most of the Northeast. So make sure to stay prepared for flooding. And if you live in a flood prone area, you need to put sandbags so your house won't flood. So be prepared for a lot of rain for the next 24 to 48 hours. Now taking a look at another thing, um, we also have a slight chance of severe weather um, where large hail and damaging winds will be the main concern maybe um maybe a slight chance of a tornado but the chance is limited at this time if we were to take a look there yeah there's not much of a chance of tornadoes but damaging winds should be the primary impact for the day so you need to keep that in mind and taking a look at day two we do have an enhanced risk of severe weather which could, could be considered major as the primary risk will be damaging winds and large hill and isolated tornadoes as well thanks to this um initial bomb cyclone that's moving through the 
um, United States at this time. It's going to encounter a little bit more of an unstable environment for severe weather to occur. So that's something something you guys need to pay close attention to in the Midwest for this week. But yeah, guys, I guess that's it for this video. I think guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. Make sure to like if you like this video. And make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content. And I hope you guys have a good day.